what has been your experience, like some of the biggest hurdles that you've seen when you get a, uh, a brand new training business that didn't have any systems before and they start implementing your software? Uh, I think one really big thing is driving adoption. When you bring any software on board, if you've got a team or even if it's just yourself, driving yourself to actually start using the system to its potential is a huge thing. Um, you know, we obviously as a system, we have so many different little tiny things in place that you can potentially use to help your business. And it's about taking that time to sit down with our support guys, particularly with Ian, and go through exactly what that is and, and build your business systems around how a software piece can, can help you and support you. You know, bringing all of your data into the one space is fantastic and it really helps, but then having the ability to follow up on that data and making sure that you know, everything is tracked down to the minute, down to the second in the system, and that you're getting the most out of the system day to day for your business. Hey, what's up, everybody? That was Freddie Fenton, this episode's guest on the podcast. And I think you're going to really like this show as far as maximizing the tools, in this case, software to really make your business grow, use it to make your business grow. I'm sitting in the office of my club, Catalyst, um, that I come to every day and I'm involved in the day to day. So I can really relate to this episode of grabbing some uh, software tool and being able to use it in a way that makes it effective. And if you need more members in your club, reach out to Profit Marketing Solutions. Tim Lyons and his crew over there at Profit have created this GPS product that has helped several people, friends of mine that I know personally, they're not bullshitting me, get more members in their club and who doesn't want more members more revenue more money so if that's what you're looking for do yourself a favor and, and reach out to tim and then if you need a new website and who doesn't these days offering tree incorporates so many things scheduling payments um, makes it easier for people to sign up for your offers come in for free workouts check them out super super affordable the plans start anywhere from five to eleven dollars a month. Who can't afford that? Who can you can't afford not to have a decent website? So check out Offering Tree. And last but not least, Cryo Releaser. You know, I beat the hell out of myself between strength training, jujitsu, um, and uh, hockey. You know, so I'm always beat up. I always have soft tissue things going on, and Cryo Releaser helps me reach those hard to hit spots to find some relief for those soft tissue issues. And it comes right out of the freezer, so it's ice cold, so there's an anti-inflammatory effect as well. I love it, you should check it out. Click on, go to trainergym.net, click on exclusive offers by sponsors, and you get discounts that you can't get anywhere else. Now, on with the show. I uh, hope you enjoyed this conversation with Freddie Fenton. There's a lot of takeaways. Um, and if you're curious at all, don't be afraid to reach out to them. Uh, there are easily, they are easily the most responsive when it comes to support. I call and I get a human being, not a machine, not punching a bunch of numbers, but a person answers the phone and helps me right away. They're extremely uh, responsive when it comes to customer support. So hope you enjoy this conversation with Freddie Finn. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the live broadcast of Masters in Fitness Business podcast, where you get to stand on the shoulders of giants. And today, I'm finding a giant all the way on the other side of the world. This is Freddie Fenton. He is uh, vice president in charge of sales and support for Clubworks, uh, and they are based in Australia, Brisbane, Australia, correct? That's correct. Yeah. And um, I really want to thank Freddie for taking the time out uh, because as of right now, it's about 2.30 my time, 5.30 a.m. his time. So I'm uh, kind of wrapping up my day and he's starting his day. So I appreciate okay. you getting up at the crack of dawn to, to join us, Freddie. No worries. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah. And like I said, you work for Clubworks and I know a lot of people, I know you guys are probably big in Australia because that's where you're based. Um, and you're just now making a foray into the, the U.S. market. Um, but I came to find um, Freddie through uh, Ian McGeorge, who is the U.S. sales rep for Clubworks. 
and we were using mind body like everybody uses mind body and i hated mind body just like everybody hates mind body because they're big uh they're um they are not responsive and they're expensive and they raise their fees every year so we tried an experiment and switched over to clubworks just to see how it would go and um that was bad we started that process in january of train uh, uh changing over our uh, systems to club works and my club catalyst and i just have to say that it has gone extremely smoothly um clients like it we like it it gives us a lot more opportunities the biggest thing is that they embed text and email into the software so you can communicate directly either individual text or group text uh, with clients that are registered in the systems and it's just everything else you can customize it to your memberships and your business but we've been really really happy with it because the customer support has been phenomenal uh, they've been really responsive and it's a third of what we were paying with mind body so we've been really happy with uh, clubworks and we've been in communication with them quite a bit with Ian um, and then, so I started talking to Ian about, uh, coming on the, uh, uh, podcast. And so he hooked me up with Freddie and Emily, who is the, uh, CEO of the company, but she had to leave, uh, to have a baby. Um, I know lame excuse, but, uh, she just had her baby last Friday or second baby boy. So congratulations to her mazel. And, uh, so we get, uh, Freddie um to talk about a couple of things that are relevant to his product but first i wanted to kind of give us pump the tires on his products because i really believe in it um and tell you kind of the backstory how we came to be on this podcast so um freddie you wanted to talk about um it's an interesting subject and i think it's really re uh, relevant to my listeners is what happens when you have no systems in place when you're doing analog and everything by cash and check and punch card and index cards and and because i remember when i first started out i had my client sessions on an index card that i would either oh, wow. initial and check off and and then i would have to collect payments and then we would get in dispute well you came you use 10 sessions and I only use eight sessions and that whole rigmarole until I switched over to EFT, electronic funds transfer and software to run the business. So all of that stuff will be automated. And it did a couple of things. It took a lot of that headache off my plate, but it also stabilized the income of my business. So I knew what my income was gonna be month to month so I can project, plan and uh, do some strategic things to help the business grow. But you had an interesting, um, uh, side note to that that I, I thought was really a good point before we started recording you said you know there's a continuum there's you know the having no systems at all and what happens then to having too many systems which can be just as bad as not having enough systems so uh, I want to try to see if we can find that sweet spot right in the middle so you want to pick up from there Freddie yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for having me. I hope I do a decent job pinch hitting for Emily. So uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, but in terms of our, our systems and, and not having enough or having too many, I think really the important thing initially is to understand your business and your client base and, and how all of that can work for them. Obviously, being in fitness, the number one thing we want to do is serve our members. But we also want to make sure that we're managing things as efficiently as we can around that. Um, and I think having a having a punch card or working all the way up to having a, a disorganized spreadsheet is nobody's fault and it's nothing bad, but it's not giving your members the best experience they can have. And it's putting a whole bunch of extra weight on your shoulders that you didn't need to have there either. Um, you know, obviously from, from our perspective at Clubworks, our goal is to automate as much as possible and, and get you back to facing your members and growing your business or, or at least consolidating everything. Um, and, and that comes really from just having the ability to, to understand exactly where you're at, at a point in time, you know, we, you can jump straight into our system. You can see automatically where you're at in terms of, you know, your monthly, your monthly takings, your potential revenues, um, where people are at in terms of attendance, because a really important thing obviously is people dropping off from a membership or not being able to, uh, 
you know, to make it to class that day or something along those lines. And you want to know that straight away so that you can follow up and make sure that they're having the best experience with your business. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, myself included, and I don't think I'm alone. A lot of trainers, when they first make the jump into opening their own business or doing their own thing, uh, they're either renting space from someone or, but they're just keeping their client book. Uh, my wife still does it. She still does it old school. And you know what? I can't knock her because she makes a lot of money <laughs> and she's a really good at saving. So it works for her. You know, so if that's what you're doing and if it's working for you, more power to you. But I know for me, um, I wanted that stuff off of my plate because too many things fall through the cracks. And it's funny, I was just talking to my wife this weekend and because um, it was a holiday weekend and she was going through her client payments and uh, she had to go through them analog style, kind of old school. And she realized that uh, several of her clients either didn't pay or shorted her some money. So mm -hmm. uh, but she had she not gone through that paper stack, she wouldn't have known that. Um, so for me, I needed to you know, get organized to where I knew the payments, the sessions are being clicked off. Uh, payments are coming in on a regular basis. I know what my income is day in and day out. I know um, how many sessions uh, clients have left if they came in for sessions, which is really important because there's two reasons I found uh, major reasons why people quit. No results and non-use. And Thomas Plummer talks about the num magic number is eight. You need a client to come in a minimum of eight times a month. If they drop below that eight, they're headed out the door. Maybe not that month, maybe not the next month, but eventually they're going to quit because they're mm -hmm. not coming in enough to see results. So mm -hmm. if you can have some piece of software that automates that for you so you can say, hey, uh, Jane's been in only six times this month. I got to get on her to get in here more, you know, or, oh, Jane's payment didn't go through. Uh, maybe we need to update her credit card information or whatever it is. I know that was huge for me uh, okay. as far as organizing my my business. Now, when I started out, I was a one man show, but I eventually had to hire staff. And I know that that staff gave me the ability to delegate, delegate uh, responsibility take it off my plate so I can do what I was really good at, which was training and leave all of the business side to someone else. But it also gave me KPIs, key performance in indicators that I could use to hold that person that I gave that responsibility to uh, accountable and also to keep a, uh, my pulse on the business. If those KPIs start to drop, mm -hmm. like for instance, attendance, if if Susie's only coming in six times, I know that's a red flag that I need to need need to get on her. You know, so simple little things like that, simple little KPIs that you can delegate to somebody else gives them the autonomy and empowers them to really own and run that position while you can do what you do best. Say in your lane for me, it was training, stay in my lane and do my training. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think, and and you're in a good position in that you've set that initial KPI. You know exactly what those numbers are that you need to hit. And a lot of businesses either haven't gotten to that point or sort of have a way of building excuses around why that number isn't being hit. And that's not you know not not to anyone's fault, but that might be, oh, you know, we had one day shorter this month that people weren't able to come in, or you know, the, their favorite trainer was sick for one day, or something along those lines. And then automatically you have that that way of saying, hey, this is something that didn't necessarily perform. When the the goal for us or the goal for any system that is supporting a business is to give you the numbers right there in black and white. And you're able to then make a determination around that and you're able to see exactly how everything is performing exactly at the time that you need it. So, you know, you might sit down with your person that, that you've hired that's working on your business at the end of the month and go, OK, this person didn't attend eight times, which is our, our minimum number. This person you know, didn't attend even three times. And these are things that we're only tracking right now at the end of the month. Whereas, you know, for us, we may be able to build out some in initial automatic automation which will give you the ability to call this person has attended six times we're coming up to the end of the month let's send out a message straight away and see if we can get them in for those final two 
And those are the sort of things that sort of allow them to preempt and, as you said, have that autonomy to, to follow up on their goals and know where they're at from your business perspective. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point because uh, I know for me, the one of the biggest things I pay attention to is retention. Yeah. Uh, I want my retention numbers to be really around 95% is my goal. I don't always hit it every, we don't always hit it every month, but we're in, we're in the nineties every month. Um, this month was an exception because we had a lot of kids leave for college um, uh -huh. and we train a lot of hockey players that go back to their teams. Um, so this month we lost, or I should say last month, August, we lost more than normal, but that's, we know that we expect that. But for me, I need to know how many clients I have. How many did I lose? How many did I gain? What's my net gain or net loss for that month? That's a great indicator of how my business is doing. Retention is a great ind indicator of how am I doing? How am I serving my clients? Am I doing a good enough job to keep them around month after month after month? You know, so those numbers can give you a lot of information about your business. In addition to knowing how many leads you got, um, how many people you have on trial, and how many new members you have, because those are the most important thing. People you have on trial, you got to wind them and dine them. And then new members, you got to take advantage of that 90 day honeymoon period and really get them enamored with your business. Try to get as many referrals out of them as possible on and on and on. So but you can't do that if you don't know the numbers. So what has been your experience, like some of the biggest hurdles that you've seen when you get a, uh, a brand new training business that didn't have any systems before and they start implementing your software? Uh, I think one really big thing is driving adoption. When you bring any software on board, if you've got a team or even if it's just yourself, driving yourself to actually start using the system to its potential is a huge thing. Um, you know, we, Obviously, as a system, we have so many different little tiny things in place that you can potentially use to help your business. And it's about taking that time to sit down with our support guys, particularly with Ian, and go through exactly what that is and, and build your business systems around how a software piece can, can help you and support you. You know, bringing all of your data into the one space is fantastic and it really helps. But then having the ability to follow up on that data and making sure that you know, everything is tracked down to the minute, down to the second in the system and that you're getting the most out of the system day to day for your business. Yeah, because I know habits can be hard to break, you know, because yeah. for me, I've been training for 29 years. Um, and so and I when I first started training, I kept track of my appointments in an appointment book. You know, those old things that kind of look like this right here <laughs> that you actually like wrote names down. Matter of fact, what I would do is when I first started out, I didn't have any clients. So I would write fictitious names in at a time slot. So when I would get a client, I'd say, OK, when do you want to come in next? Uh, and they would say, oh, Wednesday at eight. Oh, I got somebody in that spot, you know, but they're pretty flexible. I think I can move them. Um, I'm pretty confident I can move them. Why don't I write your name down? And if I can't move them, I'll let you know. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you Wednesday at eight. You know, and so that was just one trick. But anyway, my point is, is that I got used to a lot of that analog and paper. So now the the biggest matter of fact, we had a staff meeting today and my general manager yelled at me um, and because uh, she keeps me in line is because I'm the one uh, that messes it up the most. I'm the one that fucks it up the most. When we get a new client, I still email them a PDF of our uh, health and history. When yeah. now, because the club works, we're able to send it to them digitally yeah. and they can fill it out digitally. And then we keep in, in their file, digital file. So nothing gets lost and everything is in one place. So a lot of times, is it the owner that fucks it up and makes it hard to adopt, not necessarily the employees? Well, first of all, I love that sales story. Salesman after my own heart. That's that's fantastic. Well done, mate. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of in terms of who is messing up the system, me, I'm a manager. That's what I do all the time. I'm constantly changing my systems and constantly doing things to my team that's annoying the hell out of them, especially if we've agreed to something. But 
as a, as an owner or as someone that's just seen something continue on and grow for so long, it is often hard to step away from that and go, I have this new thing supporting me now. I, I have to trust it and I have to use it. So I think for us, it all comes back to training and support and how we can help you. Can we set up your current business systems as close to as close to in our system fantastic and then any tiny little changes that we have to make let's make them now so that you get used to it as quick as possible yeah i agree and it's just about taking the time and know that there's going to be a lot of front front loaded work yeah and then but once you get that down uh and develop those new habits digital habits i call them then yeah. things run a lot smoother because i have to tell you that my team is a lot younger than I am because uh, I'm sure. old, but um, they're, they take to it like fish to water. So, yeah. but now today, like here's an example today in our staff meeting, we just talked about reports. Okay. Um, who do we have on trials? Okay. Where are they at in the trials um, and how they feeling on those trials? We talked about that. We talked about clients who haven't been in, and who's going to reach out to them and how we're going to reach out to them and what we need to say when we reach out to them. And then we also talked about um, um, what else did we talk about today in the staff meeting? There was one other thing, um, client attendance, but also, oh, reassessments. We do a regular reassessment. So we're able to track that through the software as well because you guys have a report section. And so we can create and generate these reports. I can't, my general manager can, uh, but, um, but you know, so when we do our staff meetings, now we're using the software and the numbers generated by the software to run the staff meeting. And it goes a lot quicker. It's a lot cleaner. Um, um, the direct line of accountability is a lot clearer, um, not only for me, but for the people who are trying to do it. Uh, and for me, the most important number that I look at every day is when I open it up, it's that dashboard. It tells me what my projected monthly income is. It, it tells me how many total clients I have. It tells me how many new I got this month, this week, and how many have canceled. So then that way I can see if we're net positive or negative on clients and see if we've hit our goal of new clients. So our, our goal happens to be eight new clients a month because we're a small facility, about 3,000 square feet. We can't handle a large influx of new clients without our customer service dropping off. Um, yeah. So for us, it, it's, been, it's been extraordinary. We use, it's been a lot easier for us and to adopt than mind body i can say that sure so um what are some of the key features that you think like somebody just jumping into getting some kind of software to run their business should pay attention to um i think for us not well not just for clubworks but for any piece of software reporting is a huge thing because at the end of the day a crm or a system is essentially just a it's a database. It's it's a play. It's it's a spreadsheet that looks a lot nicer than it is. So, uh, having the ability to pull those reports that you're focusing on and and giving your team the opportunity to to really add some context to those reports because I'm sure you know you might sit down and go, oh, our can our cancellation number this month is insane. But then they might give me that context of actually you know you've got all the hockey players going back. Um, I'm hoping you're a Blues fan, and in, in in which case, congratulations. Um, you know, I'm I'm going to meet the Stanley Cup tomorrow night. I am so pumped. One of my clients is part of the uh, Blues ownership group, so he gets a day with the Cup. So he's uh, he's hosting a party, and I've been invited. I can't wait. All right, you <laughs> need go to send ahead. me I'm all sorry. the No, no, no. That's amazing. You need to send me all the photos possible. Oh, um, I'm going to post some. No, you can be assured of that. Yeah, I'm I'm really pumped. Australian kid with a Canadian dad, so I'm, I'm uh, waiting okay. for that. Okay. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. You come by naturally. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so yeah, you have that context though with the hockey players going back to hockey season um, and, a, and a few things changing with kids going off to college. That is where, you know, you still have your human ability. You still have everything that's there, but you're able to support it with those numbers and you're able to go, Hey, look, this is what's happening. Can you tell me why? And instantly it goes, it's a way it takes away the, this is a nasty conversation. It takes away the fact that, oh, someone is getting blamed for something. 
now you're all about accountability and you're all about understanding exactly what's going on so that your staff member who is in charge of retention can automatically go, yep, look, I didn't hit that number this month, but I didn't hit that number because X, Y, Z. And they have that sitting right in front of them. So I think that's a really important thing is to make sure that your reporting's there. Um, and obviously that whenever you jump into a system that support is there, because that's a huge thing. Obviously, it's just making sure that there's as many people as possible that are there to help you get up and running and make sure that there's as minimal disruption as possible. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And, and I think like some of the things I was sitting here thinking and, and we talked about, you know, when you don't have systems, so many things can fall through the cracks. So some of the things that I notice that fall through the cracks are not knowing how many times the clients come in, you know, um, not, you know, arguing over sessions and cancellation policy and all of that, losing money <laughs> and not knowing how much money that I have coming in. So not knowing how much money I got to put aside for taxes. Ah, yep. And then I get hit with a huge fucking tax bill at the end of the year that makes me want to shit my pants. So are there, I'm sorry, this is, this is an explicit podcast. Huh. I, I keep it as real. This is me. Yeah. So uh, I cuss. So feel free. But anyway, but I know you're in professional mode. But anyway, so that's some of the things that I noticed that falls through the cracks, fell through the cracks when I didn't have systems. Are there other things that you notice that fall through the cracks with company, with businesses that you work with? So that's, those are huge things. Um, I think all of those, you know, it's mission critical, it's money, it's attendance, it's, oh, I have all these members, but then nobody's turning up, what's going on? Um, and I think the biggest thing is, is lost revenue. So it's the ability when you, when you have people coming in, but they're coming in way too often for you to, uh, to track that consistently on a spreadsheet or, which is a great thing, you know, it feels great because you've got these people that are constantly using your service, but then you're not charging them accordingly for it. And then you're just you're gripping money left and right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge part. I think definitely not knowing where people are coming to you from. So, you know, you might be spending some money on some ads or you might be doing something along those lines. Where, how are you tracking that? That's a really important thing as well is yeah. where is the money that you're spending actually getting you, you know, you might say, oh, you know, we've had an increase in the number of people that are coming into the gym after I spent a bunch of money on Facebook ads. That doesn't necessarily mean that they came from those Facebook ads, if that makes sense. So that's right. one thing that, that's been a, a huge thing for us is, is making sure that everything is attributed down to the cent in terms of where you need to spend it or how it is being sent. Yeah, because you, you need to know what's making money for you and what's costing you money. When it Absolutely. comes to, to advertising and marketing, for sure. Yeah. Um, and the the other thing that I think is is really big with the software um, is um, shoot. I just lost. I keep losing my train of thought. But you said something right before I launched into those points about what happens when you don't. Um, what falls through the cracks when you don't have systems. Do you, do you remember what that was? Can you refresh my memory? I should have wrote it, wrote it down. That's why I keep my notepad uh -huh. because my memory is just awful. Um, that is a very good question. I am just trying to think of what it was now. That's all right. It, it'll come back to me. So we'll get there. let's, let's jump to the other edge of that continuum where you talked about having too many systems that creates duplication and waste. You want to share yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, a lot of people who are in that situation feel like, Oh, that's better. I'm, I'm achieving something by having, you know, one system for my email marketing, one system for managing my clients, one system for signups, one system for, you know, all, all myriad sort of things. And they might think I have a best in class solution because I'm using each of these different providers that are, that are fantastic in their fields. That's awesome. That can get very tricky very quickly because all of a sudden you've got someone who's brand new signing up. You then have to go and manually add them to your email marketing. You then have to manually go and add them to your database of clients. You then have to go and you know make sure all of these things are tracked. If someone cancels, they're not automatically being removed from these systems or you know something along those lines. Um, it's very hard to track payments when you've got multiple systems looking into multiple things. If you're marking things yourself and you have to go, yes, so this person has attended or 
this person hasn't happened, you know, and there's just a whole range of things that can fall apart really quickly because there's a lot of manual work involved, or if you've managed to automate that, there's a lot of places for that to fall apart. Whereas, you know, with, with, with one or possibly two trusted single systems, all of a sudden, everything's in one place. It's all running off the same, same database, the same setup. So automatically you can then go, this is my, you know, this is my source of truth for everything that's happening in my business. And that's where you get those really strong numbers in terms of reporting and those sort of things straight away. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point because it could be um, paralysis by analysis, right? Yeah. Like, uh, because everybody, you know, this is a world that is just infatuated with data, right? We want to, we want to quantify ourselves and our businesses and quantify everything. How many steps did I take today? How many calories did I burn during that workout? You know, what heart rate zone was I in? <laughs> so everybody's into quantification, but you know, you know, some data is useless. It's meaningless, right? Yeah. So you have to learn what numbers really matter to your business and focusing on those, right? So yeah. how, how, what are some ways that you can do that? So I think it's measuring over time. I think absolutely understanding where you are from a baseline and going, cool. So we've seen our, our membership numbers spike. We've seen a whole bunch of new people come on board, but we've also seen our cancellation numbers go through the roof. Is there something that we can attribute to that? Is there something that we can automatically say was an outside factor in, influencing that? Um, because then you might be say, actually, you know, the number for us isn't necessarily the number of new members we're bringing in, but if for us, it's minimizing that, that cancellation number. It's making sure that everyone's being paid on time and all these sort of things that are coming through because those are issues, ongoing month to month issues with your business. So if that's something that is consistently happening, then that's something that, you know, it becomes a huge issue for you. Anything that impacts your bottom line obviously sits right at the top of things. Anything that impacts your customer service or your perceived level of support within a business is at the top of is, is at the top of that list. And essentially you just work down from there, I think, in terms of saying, is this a positive number or a negative number? How important is it to us as a business? How important is it to our clients? And that's why you develop those metrics that work for you. Okay, got it. So, and I always go with the philosophy, it's uh, simple is always better, right? Yep. I mean, or maybe you can start small, maybe start with one area and, and build your way up from there. You know, because I think for most training studios, I think probably the most important numbers that they have are um, the numbers that I mentioned, um, at least for me. And that's my focus is yeah. is how many clients do I have? How many new ones have I gotten? How many cancellation I have? And then how many leads am I getting? How many people are on trials? And how many of those trials are being turned into Everybody. members? Yeah. So Absolutely. I th I think if you start with those bait and those are pretty simple basic numbers, pretty easy to track with yeah. with software. <laughs> and I think if you start there, then that can point you in the right direction. Because like you said, if your retention if your retention numbers are shit, obviously you've got some customer service issues that you've got to yeah. deal with. If you're not getting any new members, you've got a marketing issue. Right. Yep. So if you're getting a lot of cancellations, that's also, you know, month in and month out. Then you also have some customer service issues, you know, or uh, you're not managing your clients expectations from like the first time they come in to, yep. you know, uh, you, the, the level of service you're delivering isn't meeting up to what you said it would. And yep. so they're leaving. Um, I mean, you want to add anything to that? Do you think that's true or? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. But I think the biggest thing for anyone who's just adopting a system or the biggest thing for anyone that's got so much on their plate that they're not really sure where they're at, start small, start with one number, figure out the exact cause, like the, the exact trigger that will affect that number, fix that number or make it where you want it to be and then move on to the next one and make sure that they're not slipping. So get them to a certain point and then make sure that the rest of them line up to that point. And that is, that's how you do it. Just start with one and work from there. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. But I, you know, Frank Nash is, he's a friend of mine and he's been on the, the episode, the podcast several times. And, 
and we talk um, whenever we're at conferences together and we were talking about um, um, we, we talk a lot of, about a lot but we were talking about man my memory is really bad today I apologize but we were um, <laughs> we were talking about um, uh, not client retention oh we were talking about trainers who just want to be trainers they don't necessarily want a business they you know they just want to train you know they want to train their clients and they want to make money and that's where they're happy and that's fine and then you have other uh trainers who want to start a business and then they have to hire employees and and build a structure and build a team and things like that anywhere you want to go on that spectrum i think you need some kind of system yep you know um to make your life easier to make sure you're maximizing your money, to make sure that nothing is falling through the cracks, to make sure that you look professional and that your clients are, are getting a professional type service, whether you're the only employee or whether you have 200 employees. You wanna make sure the customer experience is good each and every time and that the business is growing and how do you know if it's if it's growing? How do you know if you're paying your taxes? You know, all of those things. How do you know what your profit margins are? All of those things you need to know. And there's nothing easier to do than software. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of front end loaded work, learning and getting trained on it and maybe inputting some of the data. But once it's there, then it runs smooth in the background. I mean, do you think that obviously you think that's true? You want to <laughs> add anything to that? Yeah, so I think um, no matter where you are in the spectrum and everyone's goals for their, their business are different. You know, my goals for where I see the Clubworks team going, that's completely different to my boss's goals or my, completely different to members of my team. And it's the same no matter what business you're in, no matter what you're doing. Uh, wherever you feel the most comfortable and you'll have this goal in your head from day one. This is the thing that I picture when I close my eyes, when I go to sleep. This is the one thing that I, I want a system and support from your staff and from your family and from your friends and from then an outside system perspective perspective as well that's all just levers you can pull and things you can help to get you to get you there essentially so you know we as a business with clubworks we speak to hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of fitness professionals every year and we speak to people who are all over that spectrum that you've talked about our goal is to support their their goals and their business goals from uh, this is where you can get your data, these are the things that you need to do, and this is how we can help you sleep easy at night. And yeah. I think, you know, for us, it's it's about minimizing the weight that's on your shoulders from day one so that you can be comfortable and you can put your energy towards the things that you enjoy most. You know, we love the fact that fitness professionals have the ability to change people's lives, and that's essentially what you do through fitness in so many different ways. So if we are able to facilitate that and support that and help you drive that, that's, you know, that's the dream for us, essentially. Yeah. You said something that really resonated with me. You said, whatever it takes to help you sleep better at night. And I can tell you from personal experience, there's nothing that messes up my sleep more than wondering, am I going to be able to pay my rent? Am I going to yeah. be able to make payroll? You know, am I going to be able to pay this? And that's that's real, man. I mean, yep. that shit keeps you up at night, you know. <laughs> so um, if if you can have anything that helps you run your business better and be, be more successful and make more money, you will sleep easier at night. I guarantee you, you know, and I'm going back to Frank Nash. What he said on the last uh, time he was on the podcast was that. Some trainers, and I was one of these trainers, have some shame around the fact that they make money for doing what they do. I know that seems weird, right? But we, <laughs> but trainers, especially if you're coming in with a trainer mindset, not a business mindset, you think, okay, I am, a, I'm a good person. I'm a good. I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna use my perspective. I'm a good guy. I'm a really good trainer. I care about people. I want to help people. That's why I'm in this industry. Yep. Now, a lot of times people come and they're like, oh, I don't know if I can afford it. Okay, let's work out a deal. 
You know what I mean? And it, it go, it's all the way back to that. Like if you buy 20 sessions, it's less per session, you know, devaluing myself yeah. and not putting the proper value. If I devalue myself, what are my clients going to do? They're going to devalue me. Right. And they're yeah. going to try to nickel and dime me and try to get whatever they can from me. Um, and so I have to be able to say, you know what? I need to make money. You know, I want to help you. But I put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of education, a lot of time spent learning, a lot of experience. Um, I'm worth it, you know, and this is what um, I'm asking you to pay me. And I don't think it's outrageous. You know, uh, Frank Nash said it best. It's like people's like, oh, you just out to make money. He says, so, yeah, that's what businesses do. They make money. That's what jobs do. They make money. Why would I want to do this as a job or a business if I didn't want to make money at it? And if you're going to make money at it, then make money. Yeah. You know, make your money. Get paid what you're worth. You can still help people. You can still be a nice guy. You can still change people's lives. You know what I mean? But get paid. And the easiest way to get paid is to have systems. You know, because... I can tell you from personal experience when clients sign up and they buy a membership at my club and they get that withdrawal from their credit card the same day, every month, they don't even think about it. But yep. when I had my punch cards and I'm like, oh, you're coming up on 10 sessions. They're like, this motherfucker's always asking me for a check. You know what I mean? Yep. Then it becomes personal. Right. And then you're like, oh, shit, you know, I don't want to seem greedy. You know, I, I, I don't want to lose this client. You know, I don't want to piss them off. You know, uh, I don't want to think I'm a bad guy. You know, all of these things start to go through, you would go through my head, you know, yep. and then it would affect my bottom line. But now that they're like just EFT every month, same day, every month, they get drawn from their credit card. It's not about me. It's about them. And it's about what they're getting for what they're paying. And as long as that value thing is a value to them, then they don't mind, you know? And then that leaves that whole kind of loop out of it. And then I'm able to make more money. Then we're both happy. I'm happier. My clients are happier. I mean, do you find that to be a hurdle with some of the, the, the people who are trying to adopt a system or software? So the biggest thing for me is that we are the experts in how you in how to support your business you are the expert in your business and how you can help people and you need to be confident in that fact because as you've said it's not about devaluing yourself it's not about you know harming this person in any way by trying to make a little bit of money you have to keep the lights on you have to keep yourself happy and for your own personal you know mental health you need to be at a certain level for you know in, in your sales life that's i'm a salesperson it's how we how we operate at the same time, I think I'm a salesperson that solves real problems. And I think you guys solve huge, massive problems in the fitness industry. So making sure that you are seen as an expert and absolutely loved in your field, then yeah, there's a cost associated with that. But the value that I'm getting out of this is so, so extreme and so huge. It's fantastic. And I think us being a system or whoever you use as a system, having that, that's the way this is set up you know that's the way things have always been or that's the way that you know that's the way we operate automatically removes you from that equation automatically that's the cost of doing business with me that is the cost of how things go that's the cost of how we get you to this improvement level and all of that is it's now seen as an investment it's all very easily managed and that's it's super important yeah you know yeah i i couldn't agree with you more and it's in Thomas Plummer talks about it and he drills it into my head is that um, competition has never been more fierce. Um, and so in order to rise above the noise and I talk about it, you can rise above or you can kind of even sink below it to a whisper, you know, uh, because then that gets people attention, gets people's attention as well. But you have to be professional. And the way you dress, the way you conduct yourself, the way you train people, the way you run your business, whether you're a one person show or you have a zillion employees or Jeff Bezos, 
you know, you have to have systems in order to be professional. And if you conduct yourself in a professional manner and conduct your business in a professional manner, you can charge more. Yep. And make more money. And for me, what it came down to was I have like as, like we were talking about before we started recording, I have a two and a half year old son and I have a family. I want to be able to provide for that family. I want to be able to provide for my son. I want to be able to send my son to college if he so chooses to go. Uh, I want to be able to take my family on vacations, you know, and I can't do that if I'm constantly giving away what I do. You know, um, I, I can't remember if it was Tom or somebody told me the story about, and I think I've shared it before on this podcast uh, about um, Pablo Picasso. He's at a restaurant and this lady comes up. Have you heard this story? I haven't. Please okay. go ahead. And uh, this lady comes up to him and says, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Picasso, but I was wondering if you would draw me something on this napkin. He says, absolutely. So he takes the napkin and he takes about 30 seconds and he draws this woman a picture and then signs it, Pablo Picasso, and gives it back to her. And he says, that'd be $30,000. And she says, $30,000? It took you 30 seconds to do that. Why should I pay you $30,000? He goes, yeah, it took me 30 years to learn how to draw that in 30 seconds. So that's what it's worth. Yeah. And so I think the trainers out there, and, I, and I'm talking to myself, need to realize that. When I train my clients, that's 29 years of experience, learning, certification, growth, you name it, going into that training session. That should be worth more than some guy that just got a weekend certification and started training. Right. So yeah. I think I think from a mindset standpoint, it's so, so important. And I think that's really important because you got to have the mind, the correct mindset in order to seek out some kind of system solution, adopt it, implement it, trust it, all of those things so that you can start making more money and earning what you're worth. Yeah. Do you have anything to add on that? Yeah, so I think um, that's absolutely right. You know, your your level of experience and what you've done—that is what someone is investing in when they come and when they come and visit you and ask for your help. And that's what everyone's doing whenever they sign up for any sort of membership. They're asking for your help and your expertise and your advice. For us as a business, for Clubworks, we can get you to a baseline point, and that's what I'll say to everybody: we can get you to the same baseline. We can help you support your business in a certain way. The thing that's going to make you stand out for the crowd is how professional you are, how experienced you are and how you help people. So I think that is the great thing about having a system in place is that we can help you spend more time in developing that, spend more time in doing that, spend more time in being in front of people and getting your, your point across and, and your experience across. We provide the baseline and then from there you're able to bring everything to the table and go, yes, absolutely. You know, this is how I can help you solve every single one of your problems. That's awesome. Yeah, I think, and I think that's the sweet spot. I mean, we talked about earlier about finding the sweet spots between having no systems to having too many systems is finding the system that is simple, easy, and moves the needle. Finding numbers and data that move the needle, that help you move the needle in the right direction. Um, and I think that is, so key and for me with your software and I, and, and who, there's a lot of options out there but i know with your software we were we were able to customize our scheduler we were able to have our clients schedule online and through their phone um, we were able to send them text messages individual and group send them emails individual and group customize our reports and customize a lot of other things and the initial package that we signed up for was $105 a month, which is pays for itself the first month. It really does. Uh, at least for us, it did. Um, so I, I can't say uh, enough 
um, for you guys. So in your experience, what I know for in the fitness industry, the biggest hurdle we have and going uh, before I go there, just to backtrack a little bit, I think the sweet spot is having a system that works and help you move the needle and marrying that with personalization, mm. right? Knowing when to, when a phone call is more appropriate than a text or an email, you know, or adding that personal touch, you know, um, to let them, your clients know that you care. We talk about it a lot on this podcast, but I think, I think it's really, really important. And there's no, one cookie cutter formula for it. It depends on you. It depends on your business and it depends on how you're using the software. But I think the sweet spot is marrying that technology with the personalization and the personality that you bring. And if you can yeah. do that, that is the sweet spot. That's when your business starts to grow. Your clients are happier. You're happier. Your team is happier everybody is happier and that's the that's the sweet spot and i think it's really really important for people to realize because i know for me i i can fall into the trap of okay i got this software my business should start growing right you know and yeah. then i get this software and i'm like oh this software isn't fucking working at all my business isn't growing at all because i'm not doing my part the software yeah. is doing its part but i'm not doing my part i'm not yeah. marrying with you know um the, the personal touch, the personality, you know, um, you got to be the mayor of your club, so to speak. So, um, and of your community, really. Uh, yeah. But if you don't marry those, if you just think, oh, I'm just going to buy this piece of software and I'm going to be the next, uh, I don't even know who you, um, I'm going to be the next um, Gary V. I'm going to be the <laughs> Gary V of fitness because I have this piece of software. No, no, it's just a tool. Right. But it's yeah. a fantastic tool, but you have to marry it with the personalization. That's the sweet spot. You still have to get in there and do the work, pound the pavement, shake the hands, say hi, look them in the, in the eye, all of those things. Uh, have those tough conversations with them. That's the sweet spot. So I know for us, the hardest part in the fitness business is getting people to come through the door because there's such an intimidation factor, you know, because I don't know anybody who's ever joined a training studio because of a text or an email. No one. But if they, they may come in, but they don't join unless you get them face to face and have that face to face conversation. I know if I get somebody face to face, my chances of having them become a member are extremely high. So um, what do you think, what do you see as the biggest barrier in your industry for people having to jump on board with a software solution for their business? Uh, so there's a, there's a few different points there. So I think the number one thing is the trust. Trusting not only the system and the software, but the people who support you in, in getting set up, the people who work with you, you know, every now and then. You know, I, I hear horror stories throughout this industry, people dealing with bigger players than, than we are. Um, you know, I'm not going to point fingers, but people who... Mind body. People dealing with bigger companies who literally show up to support calls and then they're not being answered or, you know, these, all these sort of things that happen. And for us, that's the big thing for us, you know, with, with my team. Our biggest thing that we can do is be there to support you in the early stages and help you and be there and help you on board. You know, you're welcome to jump on as many training sessions as you'd like. Our team, I promise you will be there. If not, I'll personally come and buy you a coffee because I'm like, this is a huge thing for us, right? So for us, it's it's having the comfortability with a system and with the people who are looking after your system to get you to that point. It's having the ability to call myself or call Ian or call whoever is in the system and go, hey, look, I need this help with this particular problem. Also, do you know any other businesses in my industry that are dealing with this with this part with with this problem particular thing? How do you solve that? And we can solve that from a system perspective, but we also speak to hundreds of fitness businesses who are in a similar boat. So we can always say, "Hey, look, in our experience, this is something that works really well." So I think having that ability to say, "We have a community just as much as you have a community. Let our community support your community." If that makes sense. But us as a team and all the people that we speak to support you, your business, and open the door, essentially. Yeah. 
Great answer. Great answer. Well, we're, we're running short on time. And Ian, I'm, I'm sorry, Freddie, uh, Ian McGeorge is the, the U.S. Uh, rep for Clubworks, and he's been great um, in a word. Super, super responsible, uh, responsive, and he's just been great to work with. Really easy. Been really, really pleased to work with. And it's so refreshing to call and get a human being instead of having to send an email request. Uh, yeah. For a phone call or for service and getting an automated automated reply or just email customer service, um, which is can be frustrating <laughs> at times, uh, especially when their answer is eh, that's just the way it is, you know, uh, and that's really frustrating. And yeah. oh, by the way, your price is going up. But anyway, I don't want to get on that tangent, um, but um, but it has happened. So but anyway. Uh, we're going to do a series with Freddie. We're going to do uh, that's my new theme for this year is, is doing a series. So you can really so we can really dig in. You can get to know the guests, get to know the subject. And we're, but we're going to be talking about several different uh, topics that are relevant to the fitness industry and to his industry. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to that. And I think it's going to give the listeners a tremendous amount of useful information they can use tomorrow to make their business more successful. But Freddie, I always close out the show. This is your first episode. So these <laughs> questions are fresh. I'm going to have to come up with some new ones for the uh, for the following episodes. But it's my favorite section of the show is uh, awesome. I finish up with a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, um, I ask all my guests. And I'm going to do the same to you is what has been your most successful failure? And by that, I mean, what at the time seemed like a just a devastating loss that you weren't going to be able to recover from. But you're able to take lessons from that that you use to propel you to greater success down the road. Wow, that that is a great question. Um, I won't I won't fumble for time too much, but I think. Um, in, in business and in life, there are a number of different things that you just you just take a step back and you immediately go, I have completely dropped the ball on this. You know, for me, I worked for a previous company. We were trying to build out a team in the States. And I think we invested all, well, we, I invested all this energy, all these nights, all this late, late night energy jumping in and going, making all these phone calls, doing all this sort of stuff as a, as a good salesperson will do. And it didn't get me anywhere. And I was making hundreds of calls a day, trying to add value to customers and not doing so. That was soul crushing doing that for month and month and month on end. Eventually I took a step back and I realized, hold on, the reason I'm not getting through to people is because my value isn't there. My knowledge as an expert in what I was trying to help people with wasn't there. So what I did was I took a step away and I went, my biggest failure right now was jumping into something being super gung ho about it without having the the understanding behind it to, to really get there. So what do I do? What seminars do I go to? What things, what people do I get in contact with to learn from? And in doing that, I was able to add one, two, three, four, five, six influencer names, big names to, to, to my list of people that I knew in doing that. I was able to get in contact with people and start bringing real value to real good conversations. So I think that was, that's the biggest thing for me is going, yes, I can bring all my energy and my enthusiasm into something, but without having the knowledge behind it to, to really help, I'm not getting anywhere. Great answer. I love that. That's a great <laughs> answer. All right. Uh, and then my next question, uh, in your time in the fitness industry, yep. Um, what has been the biggest surprise that you've had to deal with that you did not see coming? I think for me, it's, and I, I sort of saw this coming, but not in the way that it hit me. I, I think for me, it's the passion that people in the fitness industry live with. You know, every single person in this industry is here to change lives. They're here to help people. Yes, they change their lives. Hopefully by making a lot of money on the end and, that, and that's awesome. But I think for me, overcoming the fact that yes, this is something that your members need, but there's a better way of doing it. You know, you 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 might be saying, I have to sit there personally and send out an individual text to every single person, every single member, because I want to personalize it every tiny little bit each time. 
when all your member really wants is a reminder of what's going on and they want to get in front of you and they want to have that personal connection when they're actually with you. But that passion that drives the person to go, I'm going to take all this time out of my evening. I'm going to sit here and individually send this message so that my member feels appreciated and loved at the end of the day, us overcoming that and helping, helping you, you as a business owner and going, let's get to the point where they're in front of you. And then let's be as passionate and lovely and, and helpful and thoughtful as we can possibly be. Another great answer because I, I, I see that a lot as well. And, and the people in this industry, they take a tremendous amount of their time and they pour their heart into some of the effort. Then when they don't get the recognition, they feel like they should get from the clients. They take it personal and they're yeah. just they They get butt hurt. And, um, and, and then they get discouraged, you know, and I think it's really important, like you said, to find that sweet spot to where if you can just send them like an appointment, a reminder or, hey, just a reminder, you know, you've, you've got an appointment to make your life better tomorrow at eight, you know, yeah. and then once they get in front of you, then you can have the real impact on them. Um, and so that way you don't, um, you know, have to pull all that energy in there and then risk, you know, getting hurt or taking it personal when they don't respond or any of those things, just realizing it's business. It's, it's easier said than done. I know uh, there yeah. are certain clients when I lose clients, man, I'd still take it personal. I really yeah. do. I'm like, oh my God, it just, it's like a knife in the heart when I lose a client. Um, and I, so I'm still there. I, and I just think that's the nature of the beast. That's the, the type of people this industry attracts. Uh, yeah. which is good and bad, but I think it's important, like I said earlier, to find that sweet spot where you marry the technology and the automation with the personal touch um, so that you can maximize your reach and maximize your potential and maximize your income. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and then my final question is, where do you go for personal and business development? Do you read books? Do you listen to podcasts? seminars, groups, support groups? Yeah, so all of the above. Um, I'm huge on personal development with myself and with my team. Um, I think it's like the the number one thing that we can do is constantly invest in ourselves. No matter what your industry is, there's always going to be something out there for you to learn. So, so I think for me, I hit up a lot of books. Yes, a lot of sales books, but I think the number one thing that's, that's changed my life really is reading To Sell as Human by Dan Pink and getting used to that ideal that we're in the 21st century now it's no longer about being a dodgy used car salesman and getting out in front of someone and saying this is this is my product take it or leave it then it falls down for you it's about let's all work together to get the absolute best outcome for yourself and for my business and let's do that and i think that that works across all industries is saying how do we work together to get the best outcome for each other Yes, I want to get paid for this, but at the same time, I want to make sure that you're having a great experience because your great experience feeds my pipeline. Yeah, excellent, excellent. What are uh, a couple of other books that you've read recently that have had an impact on you? Oh wow, um, I'm just trying to think of ones that would be super relevant to fitness. No, no, no and this is about you. So what? I, what I, you know, relevant to you. Let's okay, get to know Freddie. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got, um, so I, me being the uh, the Aussie over here, I'll say there's one, uh, it's Leadership Secrets in, from the Australian Army. I think that was a really important one for me. And it really helps with anyone that wants to lead a team because being a leader and being a vocal, a vocal leader in a team is not something that everyone's accustomed to. It's not something that I'm accustomed to. You know, you might have guessed I'm fairly young. So me getting out in front of people who are more experienced than me uh, and really driving us towards a common goal, I think, is, is a huge thing. And it's the same thing for any business owner trying to inspire their team. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Great. Well, um, Freddie, um, where can people get in touch with you if they want to find out inf any more information, if they want to implement some software, some systems, um, and you and we might want to throw Ian's name out there in case they're stateside. It might be easier for them to get it in touch with him. Yeah, so the, everyone's more than welcome to come through, either myself or Ian. You know, we we can work across this together. Um, so I guess just come to clubworks.com 
um, you know, www.clubworks.com. Um, you can sign up for a free trial there. Then either myself or Ian will get in touch with you there. Uh, you can also book a demo with myself and Ian there as well, and, and we're more than happy to help out. Um, feel free to email me, which is just Freddie with double D-I-E at clubworks.com as well. Awesome. And all of those links will be in the show notes. So if you go to trainergym.net, click on this episode of the podcast, those links to contact Freddie and Ian will be in the show notes. Freddie, it's been fun, man. I've really enjoyed it. It has. It has. And I'm, I'm super jealous of you getting to such a Stanley Cup tomorrow. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll post a, a friend me on Facebook and you'll see all the pictures there. It, right. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great experience. I'm pumped because you you don't know. I am a huge hockey fan, huge oh, hockey no fan, and I'm a huge blues fan. I've been a blues fan my entire life. I have been waiting my entire life because literally the blues and I were born in the same year. Oh, so wow. to, for them to win the Stanley Cup, so for them to win the Stanley Cup, I can die a happy man now. So... <laughs> Uh, it's a true story. So yeah, uh, check out my Facebook page and all those pictures will be right there. So Ian, I will, um, I'll reach out to you and we'll set up uh, our uh, second uh, podcast. I'm looking forward to it, man. This has been great. Thank you very much for having me, Jim. Thanks. All right. All right. All right. Uh, have a good rest of your day. I'll talk to you later. Have a good evening. See you too. Bye.